Hey everybody, a little bit of a catch up. The last video that you saw was me trying to install the gauge. I'll give you a little bit of rundown of what happened. For the first time since having the bus, water temperature gauge is working. That is very important to have. I thought it was the gauge itself. I ended up just getting a, another gauge from O'Reilly Auto Parts and that did not work. Did some self-diagnosis and couldn't get it figured out. So I'm here at Cummins. Just contributed to the global corporation of Cummins, helping them out, small business and all. Got it all taken care of. We got the oil pressure and the water reading now. Now it is going to be a straight shot over to Texas. I'm gonna try and meet up with Wes from Transcend Existence. Right now, the plan is to park at a Loves. It's like 24 miles away. Just get an Uber or a Lyft to a tiny house jamboree where he's gonna be with his bus. Might get a film with him, might not, not too sure. But now I think I have things set up, so let's get on the road. Good morning, everybody. We made it further down the road. Last night was a little bit interesting. I got to a rest area, thought it was good to go. Started getting a little chilly, but I just put on three layers of shirts, put my thermal um, underpants on and some jeans over that with the blankets and I woke up at 4 30 in the morning absolutely freezing like literally shivering this thing doesn't have a heater so I had to go to Walmart so got here around 5 in the morning got myself a new sleeping bag as you can see I went with the fancy black on teal and I've been cleaning up today I got power down I hooked up to a solenoid down there, so I'll be able to charge my phone, and then later on I'll be charging the Firefly. That Firefly has been an absolute lifesaver on this trip. Getting ready to head out. Got everything uh, set up, had some food, worked on this new mobile income job that I have, and then I'll work on the other mobile income job I have later tonight. So just trying to get as much income as possible in the next six months to build this thing out. But I'm going to get off here. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Alabama. We finally made it out of Florida, but I didn't make it too far before I had to pull over. I'm actually at a gas station truck stop, and I'll show you what I have going on. So this is either gonna be a very, very happy moment or a very unfortunate moment. There's the big 8.3. As you can see, there's coolant leaking out of here getting all over in the engine bay and I was losing about a gallon every 20 minutes. You can see the coolant gauge right here. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this only halfway up. I'm leaving it halfway full because it's easy to tell whether it uh, it loses some coolant again. So this is the scene of the crime right here. This is my first suspect and I'm hoping this is what happened. That's actually the, uh, the old hose. I cut it off, reattached it, tightened it down. I'm really, really hoping it's spraying out right here. And I really think that's what's happening because this is actually full of water right now. You actually, I don't know if you saw it in the camera, but it, some of the coolant just leaked down. So I'm really hoping it's just shooting right out here because if it is coming out of here, that means this engine has a blown head gasket. And that would probably be game over for the trip and game over for Irma. Just because repairing this engine is extremely extremely expensive and we just don't have the budget for that right now so fingers crossed arms hopefully that's what's happening i am really really hoping that's what's happening but other than that trip's going good that's one of the really good parts about being on the road one of the really negative parts about being on the road the road doesn't care what happens to you it doesn't care how much money you have how much you want to make something happen the road just happens and you got to roll with it so Something else that's happening, you might be able to hear that clicking. Check this out. Look at this gap right here. From this tire to the frame, to the body itself. Now let's check out the other side. This is the other side. Tire, body. There's something happening in there. And I'm pretty sure it's the leaf spring. Something's going on. And you can hear it clicking. And as it cools down for the night, it just 
clicks and clicks and clicks because it's cooling down and it's compressing when during the day it expands. So I don't know if that shock is bad. I'm hoping that's what's happening because that would be a fairly easy fix. I don't think it'd be too expensive. Oh, arms. All right. Getting back on the road, praying, hoping for the best. That's all we can do. So, went back there and checked. I wasn't able to bring the camera because there's a big line here. They actually have uh, one of the pumps down. It's just moving up so that truck can get in. I didn't see any new coolant, just the old stuff. And the gauge read uh, half full. So I'm gonna do another 30, 40 miles or so and see where that's at. This is actually very, very good because I didn't know where the coolant was going ever. This has been happening since, you know, we first started the trip. It wasn't noticeable because it was just leaking a little bit and it got worse and worse. I was really worried that the engine was eating that, that uh, coolant and what that would do eventually is eat through the seals in the engine and then uh, once that coolant gets in there, it mixes with the oil and it becomes like sandpaper and it destroys the engine. You have to get a complete rebuild on the engine. So it's up and up. But gonna head towards that sunset right there and uh, see how many miles we get tonight. Also, I'll be able to put it right around here. Uh, we went exactly 205 miles on 28 and a half gallons of fuel. So this is definitely getting better gas mileage than Atlas.